This week on Maker Update, a one thumb entertainment system using an LED matrix as a scanner, LED jewelry, and a rubber chicken powered camera slider. Hey, I'm Donald Bell and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. I've been working on my electric go-karts for Maker Faire Bay Area and the Power Racing Series. I hope you have something fun that you've been working on too. I've got a big show for you today, so let's get started with the project of the week. Check out this miniature one-button game console made by Gorkum Boskert. The project recycles the small CRT display from an old camcorder and marries it up to a Raspberry Pi Zero running Pico 8 game software. The entire enclosure is custom designed and 3D printed. There's a spot included for a single button, which is wired up to an Arduino Micro before heading over to the Raspberry Pi, allowing it to act as a generic keyboard input whose key you can define in the Arduino code. In this case, it's the letter Z. I've never seen anything like it. He calls it the One Thumb Entertainment System. What's really great is that within this one project, there are a few ideas that you can pull out. One is how to drive a vintage camcorder display with the Pi's composite output. Another is how to power a Pi Zero and Arduino Micro from a nine volt battery and a voltage regulator. And maybe my favorite here is how to install a custom version of the Pico 8 game software that boots right into Pico 8 or your favorite game and bypasses the desktop. Go check it out. It's time for some news. Last week, Prusa Printers announced a new 3D model database and community at prusaprinters.org. They recruited a number of popular designers to create featured content you can download. One unique aspect of the design database is that you can search for and download ready to print G-code files for your specific printer dialed in by the original designer. So if you want a Van Dragon container ship sliced up and set up for your Prusa printer by Van Dragon himself, this is the only place to get that file. In other news, the free circuit design software Fritzing is being rebooted after years of neglect. They have a roadmap of upcoming features posted on GitHub, new developers who are taking it under their wing, and it's great news for anyone who relies on the tool for documenting projects or developing schematics. Now for more projects, Marcio T has this instructable guide on how to scan the outline of an object with a single photo transistor. The project uses a 32 by 32 addressable LED matrix connected to an Arduino Uno. You place your hand or an object on the matrix, and when you hold the photo transistor overhead, it reads the outline of the object, and the matrix is updated with a shadow of what it saw. It took some time for me to really wrap my head around what's going on here, but essentially, the flash you see from the LED matrix is really a very fast sequence of each pixel switching on and off one after another. The photo transistor is taking a super fast reading from each LED and then painting the results back on the matrix. I think it's such a cool effect and I'd love to see it scaled up somehow for something like a shadow wall or a digital graffiti wall. Another LED project, but very different, Jiri Prow has a guide on making these small coin cell battery powered circuit sculpture jewelry. His technique uses brass rod and surface mount LEDs. Going the extra mile, Jiri includes a set of step-by-step -step PDF templates to help you get the form just right. If you've ever been curious about dipping your toe into freeform circuit design, this looks like the perfect place to start and a great payoff for when you're through. By way of the new Prusa Design Database, I found this incredible kinetic sculpture by Dominic Cesar. He calls it the Rainbow Roller Coaster. It's a ring of gears driven by a single motor each gear includes a spot for a paddle. Ideally, each paddle is printed in a different color, though I imagine the effect is still pretty cool, even in just one or two colors. Finally, from the Maker Monster, we get a battery-powered camera slider that is so cleanly constructed that it's just begging for an extra detail to add some personality. And so he goes to his seemingly inexhaustible supply of rubber chickens. With some extra gears to translate the slider movement into rotational movement and some yellow felt for the chicken wings, you get what appears to be the world's first chicken powered camera slider. I hope this means that there will be more chicken powered projects in the future from everyone. Time for some tips and tools. On the Tube Time Twitter account, you can see a collection of all the electrical component cross section studies that they've done, including cables, connectors, transistors, relays, LEDs. A lot of these are painstakingly sanded down layer by layer until the cross section is revealed. Openprocessing.org is a free online community for learning about and sharing creative coding sketches. It's all based around the P5.js JavaScript library. And what really made me take notice here is that there's a real vibrant community sharing games and generative art and funky little applications. 
If you need a way to get into coding that's more focused on creating and celebrating artsy interactive content, this is a great resource. Through open processing, I also learned about the IO Festival happening the first week of June in Minneapolis. It looks like a great mix of presenters that straddle the line between hardware design, interactive art, and creative coding. It looks really cool. On I Like To Make Stuff, Bob Claggett is back with a new batch of Bits videos. His new one up on desktop vinyl cutters offers a useful overview in under five minutes. On the Cool Tools channel, I talk with engineer Jordan Bunker about a thread checker that makes it possible to identify and organize your collection of leftover nuts and bolts and save you from having to drag things back and forth to the hardware store to match things up. On Thingiverse, Turbo Sunshine shows how to make your own multicolor swirl filament by 3D printing your own custom filament with different colors on different layers. It's a neat idea. Also on Thingiverse, Tom Bergman shares his customizations to OT Vinta's Rubik's Cube Solving Robot. Tom's take on this includes a dedicated Raspberry Pi and touchscreen display and covers up the components with a little bit more of a polished look. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out one of the latest videos in their Another Teaching Moment series showing how to take common measurements with the digital multimeter. A lot of us have these things and know how to measure voltage or continuity, but then it gets a little fuzzy and I'll admit that I'm one of those people. This video clearly presents the basics in under three minutes. It's worth a watch. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. Help spread the word about Maker Update. You can also get the Maker Update email newsletter sent out to you every week with show notes and bonus projects thrown in. A huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for sponsoring the show. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.